And I'm joined now by Democratic Congressman Ted Lieu, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, and Yamiche Alcindor as White House correspondent for PBS NewsHour. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Uh, Congressman, we just mentioned the committee you serve on, your chairman saying he wants to look into us. What is your committee planning to do here? Uh, thank you, Steve, for your question. Let me first say that just because the president has a power to commute a person's sentence does not mean that the president can use that power in any manner. In some cases, it can be illegal. In fact, Attorney General Bill Barr testified before Congress that if a president, for example, were to pardon a person to prevent that person from incriminating the president, that would be a crime. So the House Judicial Committee is going to investigate this to see if Donald Trump dangled a pardon or a commutation to Roger Stone. And if he did, then certainly the next attorney general, if Donald Trump were to lose his election in November, could investigate Donald Trump for obstruction of justice or other crimes related to this commutation. I just want to ask this. This may be a technical question, but our own Pete Williams pointed this out just in terms of the, the right of Congress, the right of the Judiciary Committee to be looking into clemency. You're saying you think this can be improper. This is an article two power of the president, the, the right to make a, a pardon or a commutation. Pete Williams noted that in the decision on the Trump congressional subpoena case last week, the Supreme Court said that Congress's power to investigate is tied to its power to make laws because the Constitution gives the president President, unlimited power to grant clemency for federal crimes. There's no legislative hook allowing Congress to investigate. Um, I, I know you have the, the power to investigate the president if you wanted to open an impeachment inquiry for high crimes and misdemeanors. But short of that, are you confident you do have the power to have hearings on, on, on clemency? Uh, absolutely. In fact, the argument that was uh, just made uh, was rejected by the Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas's dissent basically said we can only investigate during impeachment. By a vote of 70 to 2, the other Supreme Court justices rejected that and said Congress does have the power uh, to investigate the president. And let me just give you a simple example. The president, as commander in chief, has authority to order airstrikes. If the president ordered an airstrike on Fifth Avenue in New York, certainly Congress can investigate that. So it depends on how the president uses the power. Just the fact that the president has a power does not mean you can use it in any manner he chooses to. Um, Yamish, let me bring you in here. We mentioned there's uh, some reporting here from our colleagues at NBC News that some folks around the president, including his chief of staff, were advising him against this. What do you know about what was going on, what Trump was being told, what the conversations were like in the White House, and what the reaction has been in the White House to everything that's played out publicly in the last few days? Well, based on the reports, what we saw was the chief of staff and the attorney general cautioning President Trump against commuting the sentence of Roger Stone. And now that he's done it, you see a circling of the wagons at the White House, where you have White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany saying this was us, that Roger Stone was really a victim of unfair treatment. So even though the people around the president were telling him not to do this, once he did it, once he made up his mind, they all fell in line, which is really, I think, a pattern in this Trump White House, especially a pattern among people who want want to remain in the Trump White House. So Attorney General Bill Barr and, and Mark Meadows, they're not going to come out, at least right now, they're not going to come out and publicly defy the president because they would lose their jobs. That being said, there's this is a political calculation on the president's part. He's commuting the sentence of a, of a friend of his, someone who's saying, I don't want to turn on you. And he's thinking in his mind, he's not going to have to pay any political price or any legal price for that. That being said, there are possibly some Trump supporters who are out there in red states who, as this virus is raging, wondering why the president may be more concerned with part, with commuting the sentence of a friend rather than focusing on the deaths of their loved ones and their grandparents and even young 20 and 30 year olds that we're now seeing fill the hospitals. So I think that in this case, the president and the White House, they're now, I guess, in, in, in some ways on the same page based on my reporting because people are circling the wagons and saying, well, this was the president's choice. This is his power. At the end of the day, the president wants to do and can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, that, that's my other question to you, because we did see Mitt Romney, the only Republican senator who had voted to convict the president back in the impeachment trial. He criticized this uh, on Saturday. Also, Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania, Republican, he criticized this as well. So there, there are two Republicans out there, prominent Republicans at least, who've, who've taken issue. But your sense is otherwise you're broadly going to see Republicans in line with the president on this? Yes, even when we look at 
But Attorney General Bill Barr himself, when he was asked in his confirmation hearing, is it illegal for a president to pardon someone um, to, to, in, in a way that would make them not want to tell something that, is, that the president did illegally? Um, Bill Barr said that would be a, a crime. Now, that's not exactly what well, we don't know that the facts in this case are exactly that same scenario. But what we do know is that Republicans have stuck with the president through all sorts of controversy, including the coronavirus, his response, his response to the killing of George Floyd, his, his racist tweet all sorts of things. So Republicans have seen this and have seen the president's base stick with the president through this. So I think the Republicans, until you see mass amounts of voters separating themselves from President Trump, you're going to hear the kind of radio silence that you hear on the Republican side, save for someone like Mitt Romney, who has obviously become someone in the Republican Party who is not at all afraid of being very critical of the president when needed. Uh, Congressman, I want to ask you, too, about there. Here's an argument from uh, Jonathan Turley. You heard from him back during the, uh, uh, the impeachment process a few months ago, law professor at George Washington University. He says the commutation of Stone barely stands out in the old gallery of White House pardons, which are the most consistently and openly abused power in the Constitution. This authority under Article 2 is stated in absolute terms, and some presidents have wielded it with absolute abandon. He goes on to cite a number of cases, and I give you one, for example, you had George H.W. Bush in 1992, on his way out of office, he pardoned Casper Weinberger and five others. And the independent counsel who was investigating Iran Contra said, hey, Bush was going to testify. Now he's not going to have to. He did it to, to get out of testifying. So you've had some of these before in the past that have walked up to this line and some would say over this line. There haven't been consequences like you're talking about here. What would make this one different? Uh, there are two differences. One is, in this case, it appears that Donald Trump commuted Rogers on sentence to protect Donald Trump. Uh, that is very different than commuting someone's sentence uh, to do that person a favor. And second, Donald Trump campaigned on draining the swamp. One reason that over 60 million Americans voted for him is because Donald Trump promised he was not going to be like other politicians. He was not going to just go in there and hold on to power and do whatever he could to enrich himself. But that's exactly what he did in this case. He set up now two systems of justice one for everybody, and then one for his friends and his allies. That's exactly uh, the kind of thing he said he was not going to do. And unfortunately, we see Donald Trump just reverting back to what other politicians have done, and that's unfortunate. There was also this from Vermont Senator Pat Leahy, a Democrat. He's calling for the Department of Justice uh, to review this matter. He wrote a letter to the Attorney General William Barr today, uh, Leahy, saying, as there appears to be a reasonable factual indication that criminal activity has occurred, your duty requires you to conduct a thorough review of the circumstances surrounding Mr. Stone's commutation. Uh, Yamish, you're talking about Barr perhaps privately not being supportive of this, but publicly uh, being in line with the administration. Uh, does that mean this letter is likely not to result in any action? I mean, I think it would be surprising if Bill Barr actually went along with this and said, yes, let's let's really look at this commutation, because he obviously made his case to the president directly, and the president didn't listen to him. So what Bill Barr has done time and time again has been having the president's back, has been really defending the president on all sorts of legal issues. The president, as we can remember, um, really was looking for an attorney general that was going to be someone who had his back and who um, would ride along with him no matter what the decisions that he made. That's why he was so mad at Jeff Sessions and remain so mad at the former attorney general sessions. So as a result, I would be very, very surprised. But I mean, anything could happen at this point. But I, I just don't see that it's likely that Bill Barr is going to take a public stance that's going to be against President Trump. All right. Yamiche Alcinder and Congressman Ted Lieu, thank you both for joining us. Appreciate